This is an acid. And this is a base. Okay, thanks for watching. No, seriously, acids and bases are two of the most recognizable classes of chemicals, and ones we encounter all the time in everyday life. But what makes an acid an acid, or a base a base? The answer isn't so simple. Over the years, many scientists have come up with their own definitions to help explain the different roles acids and bases can play in chemical reactions. Let's meet a few of them. And no, ace of base will not be in this list. People have known about acids and bases for a long, long time. Even in the Middle Ages, alchemists made strong acids like aqua regia, the royal water, named for its ability to dissolve gold. Even though alchemists knew these acids were strong, they really didn't know why. It wasn't until the 1700s that scientists tried to figure out how acids and bases work, or at least started writing down coherent thoughts about them. The first scientific definition of an acid came from Antoine Lavoisier. He thought acidity came from oxygen atoms and molecules, and that's in fact where the name oxygen comes from. Its origins are in the Greek, oxus, meaning sharp, and genus, meaning something that produces. So oxygen was something that produces sharp to Lavoisier. If you've ever gotten lemon juice in a cut, you're very familiar with the sharp pain an acid can cause. Anyway, Lavoisier was wrong. Once scientists discovered that not all acids contain oxygen, they needed a new definition. It took more than 100 years, but in 1884, the swarthy Swedish chemist Svante Arrhenius came up with the first modern definitions of acids and bases. Look at this handsome guy. His definition hinged on how the acid or base dissolves in water. He noticed that if the chemical produces positively charged hydrogen atoms, also known as protons, it's an acid. If the chemical produced negatively charged molecules of oxygen and hydrogen, also known as hydroxide, that chemical is a base. And if neither protons nor hydroxide ions are produced, the chemical is neutral. Now hang on a second. If you put a proton and hydroxide together, what do you get? A water molecule. Your average cup of water mostly contains that three atom molecule, H2O, but there are also extra protons and hydroxide ions floating around. In water-based solutions, if the protons outnumber the hydroxide ions, that solution is acidic. The opposite, and it's basic. We use the number of protons to define the concentration of an acid or base, and we call that the pH scale. Zero on the scale is very acidic, 14 is very basic, 7 right in the middle is neutral. That system comes from Danish chemist Soren P. L. Sorensen, who invented the pH scale in 1909 while working as head of Carlsberg Beer's chemical department. Arrhenius's definition of acids and bases works very nicely with the pH scale. When an acid dissolves in water, it adds protons to the solution, increasing their concentration and resulting in an acidic solution. Bases do the opposite, adding hydroxide ions to the solution. Arrhenius' definition is a good one, but it's not the only way to think about acids and bases, nor is it the most useful way to explain every situation. In 1923, two chemists, one Danish and the other American, who worked independently, came up with new definitions of acids and bases. Called the Bronsted-Lowry theory, it describes how acids and bases behave when they react with one another, not just water. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is defined as a proton donor, and a Bronsted-Lowry base is defined as a proton acceptor. It accommodates Arrhenius' definitions, but is applicable to a wide range of chemical happenings because sometimes water isn't involved in reactions. The very same year, American chemist Gilbert Lewis came up with yet another, but now even more general definition of acids and bases. To Lewis, an acid is an electron acceptor, Remember, electrons are the negatively charged particles that make up bonds between atoms. And a Lewis base is an electron donor. Lewis's definition has nothing to do with protons, which means the terms acid and base can be applied to reactions that don't involve hydrogen. This expands the definition to accommodate even more chemical reactions. It's important to note that with each advance, the newer definition encompasses the old one. 
So you can explain how nitric acid reacts with, say, ammonia in water, using Lavoisier's idea that oxygen is present in nitric acid. Arrhenius's explanation has nitric acid producing a proton, while the ammonia in water becomes ammonium hydroxide. Bronsted Lowry has nitric acid donating a proton to ammonia, which makes ammonium hydroxide. And Lewis theory has nitric acid's proton except electrons from the ammonia's nitrogen, and that forms ammonium. Today, chemists use Arrhenius, Bronsted Lowry, or Lewis depending on the chemical system. For example, if water is present. Thanks to these founders of chemistry, there's a useful definition for every situation, and acids and bases are no longer so mysterious. And now, for real this time, thanks for watching. Oh.